Hi YouTube, it's Lena and I'm here today with Empties. So this is two months worth and I decided to wait and not film in August Empties but put August and September together because this is September's. I mean it's a fairly deep little basket but it's still a very little basket so I just decided to combine them together. Now how I normally do this is I do makeup, then full size and travel size, like skincare, hair care, and whatnot. And then I do sheet masks and like foil samples last. And I'm gonna do that this time, but August, September makeup, and so on and so forth from there. So for August makeup, we have the Shop Miss A Sculpting Brow Pencil. This is a little triangular brow pencil. I, if you've been with me for a while, you know, I don't really care for these. I find that my brows turn a little blocky with them. That's why I much prefer like a micro pencil, even though I go through them fairly fast. But uh, this one stayed creamy all throughout. And another problem I have with some of these more like teardrop ones is that they're very dry. They're much drier. I prefer a creamier formula. This one was still really creamy. So I would suggest if you like that type of shape, definitely try this out. I mean, it's only a dollar, so. Hard to go wrong with something that's only a dollar. And I got several months usage out of it, so. Here we have the Temp2 and BoxyCharm Liquid Glow. This is just a liquid highlighter. I used this in my foundation. I used it in um, lotions, just to kind of get it gone. I've had this forever. I'm very glad to get rid of it. Uh, I don't even know if you could like technically purchase this or not, but it's a little too dark for me, so. Here we have the Morphe concealer. I don't know the technical name of it, but it is in the shade 1.55. I did not like this too much. Like I really didn't like it under my eyes. It would get kind of creepy. I mostly used it up on my face. And I did take the stopper out, the stopper's now stuck in here. Uh, even if, you know, Morphe was confirmed cruelty-free, I wouldn't repurchase this. Their cruelty-free status is kind of on the gray side, so I, that's why I was trying to get this out of my collection anyway, but I also just, I don't love it. So, here we have what it, I counted as two lip liners, technically, because each side took me a bit to use, but this is the Marinus. Auto Lip Liner Duet in Nude Rose. One side was darker than the other. I'm gonna try to show it to you as best as I can. But this was the slightly darker side. The last little bit fell out. But this one I was able to get everything out of. It was fine. I, I liked the color, but it, very nude. I like my nudes to be a little more pink. Um, yeah. It was fine. I don't know if they still sell this. A friend of mine from Australia sent this to me a couple of years ago as part of a gift. So it's not easy for me to get anyway. Like Miraness in general is just not easy to get in the States. You have to order like from their website and they're kind of expensive. But it was all right, but not something that I will really miss. Probably my top empty of the year because I've been working on this for so long. It's the Christian Dior Rouge Dior Lipstick in Rouge Zinnia. It's the shade 743. It's a beautiful shade of red. It really is. I'm A friend of mine got me this for Christmas one year and I'm, I loved having it, don't get me wrong. The smell on this, and it smelled this way since day one, so it never went off or anything like that. Like it's a very perfumed scent that's, I don't love having on my lips. I just wore a gloss over it to cover it up, so that was fine, but like, yeah, I guess I'll go swatch. It's a stunning shade of red. I did really love it. I'm very, very happy to have finally finished it. I have been putting this in project pans since the end of 2018. <laughs> and it's just been such a pain to finish. Because it's really, really pigmented. Like, that's not something that you can wear, like, multiple layers of or anything like that. Like, I was using it as a cream blush in the end just because I was like, you know what? I'm ready for this to be gone. It's not that I don't like the color, it's just that, you know, when you've been panning something for so long, you're ready for it to go. Here is the Tarte Stay Spray Setting Spray. This is from their Shape Tape line. It's fine. It's not my favorite. I'm going through a full size right now, and it does 
help keep me matte, but there are things that help keep me matte better. So I wouldn't repurchase this, but like I say, if a mini came into my collection again, or if I had a subscription box that sent it to me, the full size one I have, it came from an Ipsy Clan Bag Plus. I wouldn't get rid of it. I would use it up, but it's like I said, it's just not my favorite. Here we have the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. It's just a little mini. This is not my favorite type of primer. It's basically a glorified moisturizer. I'm glad I got to try it in a little mini size and got to have it for long enough to know that, you know what? I don't really like it. It just doesn't do anything for me. But I would not seek it out again. And it, that's something that if it came into my collection through like a gift with purchase or something, I would get rid of it. Bad Gal Bang from Benefit. This is a mascara. I did not like this wand. It's too flexible. I mean, it's Benefit. I wouldn't want to buy it again anyway, but I wouldn't even want it if I could. The have the L'Oreal Infallible Paints Liquid Eyeliner. This dried up on me. It's fine. I don't even think you can get this anymore anyway, but nothing I will miss. And I actually did have a uh, foil sample. It is the Smashbox Photo Finish Oil and Shine Control Primer. I don't like the original. I find it too heavy, but this one I really do like. I have a mini of it in my collection, so I'm, I will have it for some time to come. Now for September's. I actually just separated these because like everything was just floating around in this basket. Now, we have another foil sample. Uh, this is the Smashbox Photo Finish Vitamin Glow Primer. This doesn't do a lot for my skin, but it feels nice and it smells really good because it's like vitamin C. I'm smelling probably the vitamin C in it. It has B, C, and E in it. I was supposed to get a mini with a Sephora order, like as your $25 coupon code, but uh, they didn't send it to me because Sephora is a whore like that. I finished the Ordinary co high, high Coverage Foundation Formula. I actually do like this. The shade is, what is the shade? 1.0 Neutral, Very Fair. Uh, this works actually really well for me. I didn't have to mix it with anything. I was throwing in a pump of the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation towards the end just to kind of get usage on that foundation, but it didn't really need it, honestly. I really enjoyed it. I would repurchase this. And it's like really inexpensive. So it's something you can't get anymore. It's the e.l.f. under eye primer. Uh, it didn't do too much for me and I just started using it all over my face as a primer to get rid of it. So and it wasn't great for that. We have another brow pencil, but this one I went through super quickly. Like this is this was crazy. It's like the Milani Stay Put Brow Sculpting Pencil. Now this one is not a diamond, but it's just like a wider tip, which I liked more than the diamond teardrop shape things. Unfortunately, like I said, I literally went through this in like a month. <laughs> so not, I would not repurchase because I don't find the value in that. And I don't wear makeup every day. If I went through this in a month, there's not enough product. <laughs> It's like, if I wore it 30 times in 30 days, and then it's like, okay, I went through it in a month, that would be one thing. But I probably only used that about 15 times. So there is just no product in it. It is super, super creamy, so. But like, I'm not fully reconstructing a brow either. It's not like that. Like, what you see of my brows is basically the shape that I have. I actually went and got them shaped recently at a wax salon. Uh, mine are just really, really light. So when I fill them in, I fill them in more for the color and to add a little bit of an arch on this side because they are just naturally not even like there is no, the, the top of this brow doesn't quite grow in. So I have to add a little bit of an arch there and I have to fill in the fronts. They're a little bit missing. But other than that, it's mostly just me coloring them. It's not, you know, me re fully reconstructing a brow. That's not the problem that I have. So I should not burn through a pencil in a month. Uh, next is the Milani Prep Set and Go Translucent Face Powder. This is a white powder, and despite me not having this for that long, like I probably had this for about a year and a half, I think, maybe two years, but not a huge amount of time. This started to grow like bumps, like not mold or anything, just like little bumps. 
and at the end it was flaking constantly like I probably lost a fair amount of product just from it flaking and going on the floor while I was using it with a brush so despite me liking the formula of this powder originally I wouldn't repurchase this again because I went through one of these already and then I repurchased it because I liked the formula but not not a third time not a third time I would pass on that mascara this is the Tarte Tardis lash paint this is a mascara that I really love I get some good volume and separation out of it I actually have two more minis and I think a full size because I got minis, one from Ipsy, one through a swap. This one was actually a swap, but when I got the one from Ipsy, I decided to use one of them up. And then I did the Tarte, well, actually I got it for Christmas, but I got the Tarte, you know, they do seven full size things for like $60 every year, at least once a year. I think they do it twice a year now. Uh, I got a lash paint with that. So like, I never remember what that thing is called, but yeah, I did that. Um, okay, this is a Lorac eyeshadow in the shade Lavender. It's just a very light lavender. I used it to set my eyeshadow primer and to blend out my crease and all that. So uh, Lorac eyeshadows go fairly quickly because they're pretty powdery and there's just not a lot of product in there as well. So this didn't take me too long to finish. This is from the Lorac Mega Pro 2 palette. So I got one shade out of there done. That's better than none. Oh, I did basically finished this. This is the Benefits Highbrow Pencil. I can't sharpen this anymore. It like goes all the way into my sharpener, but I don't see the point of having like a brow highlighter. That's what I used it for. So, and I finally got in the habit of using it. it took me a little while, but like I tried to use this as a concealer and an eyeshadow primer and it doesn't work for me in either of those capacities. So I had to teach myself to actually like highlight under my brows every day and I also use it in my inner corner so but um I don't see the point of these I'm sure there are people out there that find that they get like a really crisp brow or something I don't I don't get it but I have two more of these from other brands I believe I have two more I'm using one right now and I think I have another one from Ulta that came as part of the advent calendar I got for Christmas last year but this is not something like this type of product. Obviously, I can't buy for benefit because I'm trying to go cruelty free. This type of product is not something that I would purposefully buy for myself. Yay, lip gloss. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Lip Shine. It's in the shade, I think it's Radiant Rose. It's a really nice lip gloss. Can't purchase it again. Neutrogena is not cruelty free. This is the Tarte Shape Tape. This is just a mini. I do really love this concealer and I would repurchase it. I actually bought this many for $10 and it lasts quite a while for me because like I said, I don't wear makeup every day. But uh, I would probably just buy the full size next time because I would probably have it for the rest, not for the rest of my life, but I could probably, at the rate I wear makeup right now, I could, it would probably last me a year. So I want to go through some more concealers before I've but before I do that, so I'm not gonna repurchase it right now, but I would in the future. It's actually one of my favorite concealers. I actually use it under my eyes. I know a lot of people have problems with that, but I have really, 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 really oily skin. Like even my under eyes are oily, so I don't have a problem with making making them look dry too easily. So like if I get like crepiness under my eyes, I assume it's something wrong with the concealer because if I can wear that under my eyes and it doesn't go crepey. You know. And finally, for makeup products, looks so like this is technically a tool, but uh, this is the, I want to say this is the makeup eraser sponge. It's the one that came with the little like ball that you can like put it in a washing machine with. And uh, the sponge is okay, like nothing that I would want to repurchase. So the only thing, I really like the little case that you can wash your sponge with every once in a while. And I have used it with other sponges and it doesn't, my sponge doesn't like disintegrate in my washing machine. You can only buy them together. That kind of annoys me, but like say if you did fall in love with the sponge, you would keep getting the same little washing machine ball every time you rebought it. They really need to separate, allow you to buy them separately as well. So I hate it when companies do that kind of thing. 
And now getting into August, kind of just regular beauty empties. I guess I'll go with this on top. We have the Dr. Teal's Pure Epsom Salts. I love this stuff. I just made an Ulta order with like four more of these because this was my last one and I've actually been really sad without it. I've been trying to go through more of my bath bombs, but it's not the same. Not that they're necessarily supposed to be the same, but I've been really missing this. So I did order some more. I love this stuff. Obviously I would repurchase because I have. Something I would not repurchase even if they were cruelty free and I cannot find a straight answer online. Every website tells me something different, but this is the Simple Sensitive Skin Experts Exfoliating Facial Wipes. I found these in my, like, in the back of a drawer. I found two things of Simple Makeup Wipes, and I'm like, crap, I thought I got rid of all of them. But, uh, no. This set, I thought I remembered really liking the exfoliating ones, but these son of a bitches hurt my face this time around. I don't know if, because I've gotten a little bit older, that my skin's gotten... A hair more sensitive because my skin can still stand up to a lot of crap but I ended up using the vast majority of these to get rid of like swatches and stuff because they were also kind of dry and maybe that was part of what was bothering me about them but they have like a bumpy side so did not like would not recommend forget about it Dermalogica Rapid Reveal Peel. This was nice. Apparently the full size is just like 10 of these little minis. So this was one use for me. I would not repurchase that because Dermalogica tends to be pretty expensive. But it did leave my skin feeling pretty soft. So, you know. Here we have the Love Beauty and Planet Argan Oil and Lavender Shampoo and Conditioner. Another one that I can't quite get a straight answer as far as cruelty free or not. I don't like lavender. I don't like the scent of it. Some things where the lavender is mixed in with other stuff, I can take it. And I thought I could with this when I was first using it, I could. But by the time I got to the end of it, I was ready for it to be gone. The formula is really nice though. So if you like lavender, you might like it a lot better than I did. I, I was not a fan. Here I have two of my older Zany Laney sprays. This is Seventh Sense. It's Leather, Roses, and Wine. It's based off of Captain Marvel. I did really like this. This is... Them's My Jewels with Woods, Acorns, and Peaches. It's based off of Labyrinth. This was... I don't love the scents that have Woods as part of the scent notes. I mean, you can't get them anymore anyway, but I have them, so I will review them. And when they are in my empties... Oh, crap, I forgot this existed. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> but, uh, this is the Tony Moly Peach Hand Cream. I wish I could repurchase this, because if I could, I would. Because it does smell really good, and I will admit the packaging, while not the most convenient thing in the world, is really cute, but they sell in China. So, can't repurchase that. Tony Moly is one of those brands that I really miss, because they are very inexpensive for a Korean beauty brand. Not that a lot of Korean beauty is super expensive, but they are super inexpensive and readily available, because Ulta carries them, and carries... Not all of their line, but the majority of their line. Plus, they do like a monthly box where you can get to try a bunch of their new products. So, they're a brand that I really miss, but it's okay. I will survive. Here's the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. I really like this. This has one of the finer misting things that I've ever used, but... The Dollar Tree has the brand, the Bolero brand, that makes, it's technically watermelon and aloe, but it smells similar enough, that this little size is $28. It did last me a while because it's a very fine mist, but $28 versus a dollar. I can buy like four of them. I can buy a whole box of them for the price of this, probably. So... I really liked it. I would never turn down getting another one and say like a kit or something like that. That one came in a kit. But I would not spend $28 on it. Here we have the Pure Lease Blue Lotus Brightening Serum. It comes off as more just a basic kind of moisturizing serum with my skin. I liked it. I used it up as a face serum. I didn't like put this into dry sheet masks or anything. However, this is really expensive. This is like $65. I really like the Pure Lease brand. I don't think this did enough for me, like active results, that I would repurchase it. I would not turn down getting another one though. Like if I was given one as a gift or something like that, I would happily use it, but I don't think I would spend my own money on it. 
Another thing that I will miss, but uh, the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Vacuum Cleaner Pore Purifying Mask. Loved this, have gone through many of these. Uh, most of them have either been given to me or give or like done through swaps on mysubscriptionaddiction.com because this is like $42, but definitely left my skin feeling very cleaned out and smooth, but Dr. Brandt sells in China. Can't repurchase. A mask I'm much more happy to get rid of. <laughs> The I Do Care Disco Kitten Illuminating Diamond Peel-Off Mask. It's fine! And I like pure peel-off masks to an extent because I feel like, you know, like I get like clogged pores around my nose. And I feel like this really cleans them out, but they're not great for your skin. <laughs> so I'm trying to knock these out of my collection, but I mean I have multiples left. But I was happy to get through this full size. It's now gone. I would not repurchase, but if you're into that sort of thing, it is a very good one. You can get I Do Care from Ulta. Here's the Body and Earth Sweet Strawberry Dreams Body Lotion. This comes from Walmart during the holidays. I did like it. I bought a couple of their kits last year when they went like half off after Christmas, and that's how I got this. I don't think I would repurchase because it is a, I mean, this is technically worth like a dollar, so... It's a very basic lotion. It does have a really nice scent, but I have so much lotion in my back stock that I don't need to be repurchasing anything, even if I love it. But I just found that to be okay. Murad oh, Hydro Dynamic Ultimate Moisturizer. Found this to be a little thick, so I would not seek that out again, but I was able to use it up. I have another one of these in my September empties, but I really miss this. Like, I've gone through three bottles of this now and I've gotten really used to it and I do think it actually helps my hair. I should tell you what it is but it's the DP Hue Apple Cider Vinegar Leave-In Hair Therapy Moisturizes Dry Hair and Helps Prevent Breakage. I'm not sure about the Helps Prevent Breakage part. I don't have too much issue with that. Like I get it a little bit right here because I have baby hairs that stick out that tell me that I get it. Probably because I wear my hair back a good bit, but like I tried to change the position of my ponytail to try to avoid that. But if you wear your hair back all the time, some of your damn hair is going to break off. And, and even though I use like scrunchies now to try to be as gentle as possible. But I have really dry hair, at least the part that's still in bleach, and this really did help with that. So I do miss it. Bath bomb. This was Hemp's, the triple moisture bath bomb. I think Hemp's makes good bath bombs, but I can get good bath bombs from Shop Nisse for a dollar, whereas these are like $6.99, I want to say. But it was pretty good. If I want to treat myself and don't want to make an order with Shop Nisse, I can add this to an Ulta order and still be good. Here is the Eliza Vecca Milky Piggy Sun Treat Block Sun Sunblock Treat Stick. This is a solid stick that you like rub on your face and everything. I liked it. It it doesn't have much of a scent past like a generic kind of sunscreen scent. Um, I don't wear sunblock very often because I don't go outside very often, so. I probably wouldn't repurchase. I got this from 0.8 liter to test, but if you like solid sunblocks, their brand, you can get it on Amazon. It's fairly inexpensive and I would recommend it. And they're cruelty free. Here's the Looks in Me Amino Bubble pH Cleanser. Got this from Ipsy. It's very basic. I would not seek it out again. Ooh. Speaking of Shop Missy bath bombs, this is the Fresco one in mint. So this one I really liked. See theirs, not only do they actually like bob up and stay afloat when they're dissolving, they put off a really potent scent. And you know, they color up the bath water, they're really fun. And if I'm just using it to like get a good scent and to color up the bath water, if it's not like putting moisture into the bath water or anything like that, I'd much rather spend a dollar than seven or eight dollars. So, you know. And finally, before I jump into the September stuff, we have the Murad Vita C Glycolic Brightening Serum. There are other vitamin C serums I like better, but I was fine to use this. Now for September, 
Here we have the Biro Bitter Green Essence Toner. This was fine. It's a thicker toner. If you like something with a little bit more moisture to it, I would recommend it. However, it is $90. Don't spend that money on this. I got this, I want to say, as an add-on at BoxyCharm when I still got that because I canceled my BoxyCharm Premium because it just the choices for the month of September were just, or October I should say, were just not it for me. So I just thought, you know what, I'm not going to pay for it. I can use that money elsewhere. But uh, it's a good toner, but it's not $90 worth. Hell no. Speaking of not $90 worth, this is the Avant Biphase Hyaluronic Acid Rejuvening in Micellar Water. I actually did really like this for removing makeup. Not for using in the mornings to clean my face because it was dual phase and had an oily bit to it. But uh, I did really like it for taking off makeup. Unfortunately, $90. If this was like $30, I would repurchase it. Avant is too expensive for what it is. Speaking of peel off masks and trying to get rid of them, this is the Beauchot Luminizing Black Mask. I know some people get like tons of uses out of these little minis, but I only ever get like two or three. This one I got two, but it was starting to separate. So I couldn't quite get everything out of there. But um, I, I don't know what I do differently. I think I just use more. I don't know. But if you like peel offs, it's a good one and Beauchot's now cruelty free, but I'm trying to get away from those. Amazon exfoliating gloves for the bath. Don't buy them. They suck. They tear really easily. So another thing I wish I could get again because it was really nice. The Pantene Intense Rescue Shot Treatment for Damaged Hair. I used the solo one go because I have a lot of hair. But it did make my hair really, really soft and I wish I could get it again. Dr. Carver's Post Shave Do. This is something to use post shaving and drying off and everything to help help keep away ingrowns. If you if your skin gets really itchy after shaving like mine does, it helps with that. All really nice things. The Way Hair Care Texturizing Hairspray. I did really like this. It's kind of a texturizing hairspray hybrid. It didn't hold very well, so it was more of a texturizing spray, but I liked it. I don't know if I would buy it again, even like this little size right here, which I got as part of like a hair care pack, but it was fine. Good enough to use. I admittedly don't remember which bath bomb this was. I kind of wish I had written it on here, but I didn't. But if I, I will go back through my empties on my Instagram and check to see which one it was. But I want to say it was the cactus one. This is a whim bath bomb from Ulta Beauty, but I'm not finding these worth it. Like they sink to the bottom. They don't really smell or anything like that. And they leave a sedimenty residue in my bath. So for $8, I definitely don't recommend these. I'm trying to get rid of what I have. Let's see, I have two from Shop Miss A in here. I have the Peach Dream and the Mango Teeny. Uh, the Mango one was great. The Peach Dream one did not have enough peach scent for me, so this is like the one that I've used out of like half a dozen or so that I would not repurchase even for a dollar. But every other one I've used, I've really liked. Here we have the uh, Han Skin Real Complexion Hyal Hyaluron Skin Essence. The formula of this is really nice, just to like add a little moisture back to your face when you're after you've washed your face and stuff like that. And usually I'm also putting this on after I've used like a sheath mask or a, well, any mask really, so. Oh, y'all should have heard the swearing I did when I realized my, my thing cut off. But uh, I like to use this, but uh, I hate the packaging and that's why I would never buy it again because instead of like a pump or anything, it's just a big hole on the top, which means when you pour some in your hand, if you're clumsy like me, you pour it everywhere occasionally, so you lose a lot of product. This didn't last forever, so for like 25 bucks, you get over five ounces, so it's a good value. I just wish they would improve the packaging. If they would change the packaging, I would buy it again. Until then, I would not. And I do like the Cos RX Snail Mucin a little bit better. 
But formula wise, that's still really good. Just that packaging, man. Gotta change that packaging. Another Zany Laney spray. This is Don't Blow Away. I want to say this is a Gilmore Girls based one, but I, I could be wrong. Almond macaroons and chocolate covered cherries. This was nice, but it's not gone. It makes me sad. I have a Dollar Shave Club razor. They don't look like this anymore. At least not the ones you can buy at Walmart, but this one finally died on me. And I have a Gold Fatten MD Solution Wake Up Call Overnight Regenerative Facial Treatment. It's a moisturizer. It's a little heavy for my taste. I like a light moisturizer, except in the ex depths of winter, I can handle a heavier one. This smelled really good, though. <laughs> And it was really nice on the skin. It was just like, if you could cut the heaviness by like 25%, I would absolutely love it. Gold Fat and MD is also a little expensive. Now, sheet masks, I'll just combine them together. I didn't do that many in September, so. I do appear to have a lot of samples for August though. So there is that, let's see. We have the Soap and Glory, the Fab Pore Pore Refining Mask. I wish I could get a proper confirmation on them being cruelty free because if they were, I would buy this again. I loved it. And not only felt like it was like, you know, helping with all the nastiness of my face, uh, especially in the summer, this was amazing because it was cooling. <laughs> so, the uh, Nature's Friend Hotsunia and Cordata mask. I liked it, but I can't pronounce it, so I can't buy it because I can't talk about it because I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Here's the Cream Shops Bulgarian Rose Water Face Mask. I don't mind rose scents, but this was a little too intense for me, so I would not get that again. I have a couple of these left. The Duft and Duft Pink Milk Mask. They are really intense moisturizing, moisturization. A little bit too much for me because they kind of get a little drippy, but if you have really dry skin, I think these would be great for you. Treatist Mask Science Charcoal Black Sheet Mask for pore care. I do like these. I have a Hello Organic uh, Fruit Mask. This one I really did love because it smelled amazing. It was peach and lime. Yes, thank you. This one out of the four that I have, I think it's the one that I liked the least, and I think it was the, the combination of the coconut and the rose water just didn't do it for me. But it is the Hell Organic One A Day Water Mask for hydrating, and they're all good as far as hydrating is concerned. It's just, I didn't like the smell of this one. Maybe I'm weird. Things I did like the smell of, these two from, I think these are the, no, these are Sue A.E., both of these smelled amazing and felt good on the skin. The kiwi and pomegranate masks. The pomegranate is for renewing and the kiwi is for toning. I would buy both of these again in a heartbeat. A Pure Lease Matcha Green Tea Antioxidant Sheet Mask. Pure Lease does make some good sheet masks. And let's see, we have three of these uh, the Orchid Skin Elastic Under Youth Eye Patches. I love these, they stay on the face. You could basically do backflips in them and they wouldn't come off. Because they actually like stick. So yay that. And as far as samples are concerned, is that everything? Yeah, that's all of them. We have a shampoo and conditioner from Nature's Lab Tokyo, the Perfect Smooth. I do like these, I just don't like to pay this kind of price for shampoo and conditioner. Plus, I don't need to be buying any shampoo and conditioner right now. I have a back stock. I have the Meta For It 12 p.m. Gel Cleanser. I don't remember what I thought of this, but I will insert right here from my Instagram my thoughts. I'm thinking I might have thought this was just a basic cleanser. Most gel cleansers don't have differences for me one way or the other. I could be wrong, though. I found this with a swap. It was a Neutrogena makeup wipe, just a little single. It was fine. And here I have from Pretties For Your Face. This is a really old like body scrub sample that I found. It is the My Bugs Body Scrub, but I don't think they make the scent anymore, but I did really like the formula. It's got that good scrub to oil ratio that I really like. So, well, I don't think they make the scent anymore. I would actually consider purchasing from them in the future as far as body scrubs are concerned. They're not just eyeshadows. <laughs> 
And finally, for front, from Sol de Janeiro, we have the Balm Dia Bright Cream. And I'm sad to say, I don't think I like this. Like, I have another one, and I might try it, or I might pass it on, but I didn't love the scent of this, honestly. And it makes me sad, because I tend to like most of their stuff, but I think maybe just I want it to smell like the Boom Boom Cream. And that, that might be all there is to it, because it's not really bad, it's just... I prefer the Boom Boom Cream. So, that was forever. I will, at the end of course, insert all totals and whatnot for that. I don't have any goals this year as far as like, I'm trying to hit this much in worth or this many empties. And I don't think I'm gonna do that next year either. Cause I have a different idea, at least with my makeup, like, Next year, I'm going to be working on all the minis that I can to knock down my numbers. So I don't want to put like a monetary total because minis are worth less. And because I don't necessarily want to do that with my skincare either, or as well, I don't necessarily want to go with a numbers total either. I haven't totally decided yet as far as if I'm going to do it regular empties goal of some kind but I really want to knock my makeup numbers down so I'm thinking just to hit all the minis that I can next year because I don't count minis any separately from full size so even if I knock out even if it's you know 10 mini lipsticks that's still 10 off my number so that's to give you a preview as to what's in my head for next year so that is it like I said stay through to the end for any totals that you would like to see Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I do really appreciate it, and hopefully I will see you later. Bye!